Hey guys, Nate Johnson here, and today I'm gonna to show you my process for scanning film negatives with my DSLR, and then I'm gonna show you a little bit of how I start to edit them inside of Lightroom using an all raw process that really brings out the beauty of uh, analog film in a way that a, a traditional lab or traditional flatbed scanner really can't. So with that, let's jump in. So first guys, we're gonna look at the setup. I'm gonna show you the equipment that you need and how to get it ready to go. Then I'm gonna walk you through my camera settings and how to make sure you're getting the best quality scan. And then finally, I'm gonna show you how to start editing your scan inside of Lightroom and keep the whole process raw. And I'm really excited. I hope you guys will stick around to the end because I'm gonna show you what a dramatic difference it can make going from a non-raw process to an all raw process when you're editing your DSLR scan. So stick around to the end for that. So before we start shooting, I just wanted to show you uh, some of the tools that I'm gonna be using. The first is a scanning mask. I use the Digital Lisa from Lomography. Uh, you need to have uh, some way of uh, getting the dust off of your film. You need some kind of uh, light table. And I'm using the Kaiser Slimlight uh, Plano or Plano. For my camera, I'm actually using uh, my Fuji X-T2 with their 80 millimeter macro lens, which is just a beast. And then I have uh, my tripod. Okay, so I've got my tripod set up here. To do this, I basically just uh, inverted the center column right here so that the camera will be pointed down. And uh, I had to adjust the, the ball head uh, on this tripod here to uh, make it so that uh, I can attach the camera right there and it'll be pointed straight down at the light table. Make sure with your light table that you plug it into a power source and turn it on that setting, you'll get, uh, you'll get it much brighter that way. And basically, we want this to be as bright as possible. So on this Kaiser, actually, if you hold down the power button, you can see it's getting less bright. And if I hold down again on it, you'll see that it's getting more bright. Uh, we want this to be as bright as possible. So this is pretty straightforward. I've attached the camera to the tripod. The important thing at this step is just making sure that everything is level. And uh, the best way I found to do that is you can take your iPhone and inside of the iPhone, there's a compass app. Uh, you put it on the level setting in the compass app and then you just let it rest on the back of your camera here if your camera is flat on the back and you can use that to adjust and make sure that your camera is perfectly level. You'll also wanna make sure that your, uh, that your light table is level too. So we've got our film and we've got our uh, film scanning mask. And I'm gonna show you how to use this Digital Lisa scanning mask from Lomography. There's a couple different pieces to it and uh, it's really nice. I feel like it does a good job of keeping everything flat. Um, so basically it's a magnetic system. So the first step is uh, you take everything out and then you put this uh, right into those little grooves right there, okay? And uh, next we're gonna take our film and uh, you may not be able to see this in camera but there's, there's basically a glossy side and then there's a matte side. Uh, we're gonna wanna put the matte side down. So this, this is the matte side uh, for uh, this particular film, this is uh, Portra 400. So I'm gonna put that side down and I really should be a little bit more careful here, but uh, I've already taken this shot, so I'm not too worried about fingerprints. We'll just put that right about like that. Okay, and when you have it in a place that you like it, you just take this and it snaps into place and holds everything flat while we put this top back on. Now we take this off and when we lift up, it leaves this behind. So we have this resting perfectly flat, perfectly centered inside of our mask. And this is exactly what we want. I've got my film mask on the light table and I'll just point out that I have this uh, upside down. And the reason that I do that is first off because I want there to be a little bit of space in between the film and the light table. And that's just to even out any kind of variances in the light table and the light that it's emitting. Okay, so I've got my film mask on the light table and I've got my camera turned on. Uh, I love that this Fuji X-T2 has the live preview that makes everything 
way easier and I have it on uh, everything on manual slide and set it exactly how I want it. So let me just walk you through uh, some of the settings. The first is that I have the F at uh, eight. And the reason for that is I, I want everything to be in focus and this is a macro lens. So um, it's stealing on such a small level that sometimes that isn't the case. And also I wanna make sure there's no lens vignetting that we have to worry about later. So I have that on F8. I have the, um, I have the ISO at 200, which is the recommended ISO for a Fuji X-T2. Uh, in your case, it may be different. Uh, and then I just basically adjust the shutter speed to whatever gives me the right exposure. Uh, in this case, it's 1 8th of a second. And you can see, I know this is the right exposure because on the histogram, the histogram is very far to the right and I only have uh, the image in there. And the reason you want the histogram to the right, there's not as much information in the darker regions of the histogram. Uh, it's kind of a, a simple way to explain it. So you basically wanna go as far to the right as you can without doing any clipping. Now I have this on manual focus and I can uh, adjust that with the lens here. And it's really great with the Fuji X-T2. It'll actually give me super close up so that I can really make sure that I'm focusing and you wanna to try to focus on the film grain. So once you start to see that film grain come, in, come into focus, you know that you're on the right path. Now you also wanna minimize shake when you're taking this. So I'm just gonna go into the menu here and I'm going to, I'm going to turn on the self timer for 10 seconds. Okay, and so now we're ready to take it. Oh, you'll also want to make sure I have the I have grid lines up here so that I can make sure that this is properly lined up. That's about right. So we're ready to take this. We'll give this a go. All right, so we've got our DSLR scan here in Lightroom, and I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to convert this. It's going to keep it all raw and give you great colors. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this color selector here and we're just going to uh, select a part of the mask here, a part of the film mask, okay? And uh, next, we're going to apply a preset over here, and this is part of a package called Negative Lab, and uh, I'm just gonna select the Neuritsu color, and we can talk about what that, what that means later, but this is basically doing two things. First, it's setting a raw profile, that uh, was specifically made for my camera and uh, was specifically made for DSLR scans. So it's taking out some of the things that are in a typical profile that, uh, that tend to throw off the tones and colors that you'll get from a DSLR scan. And the second thing it's doing is it's changing something called the color matrix. And it's trying to get us closer to, um, to the colors that you would get from a Neuritsu scanner, which is a scanner that's commonly used in professional labs. All right, so just one more thing is we need to crop this so that only the exposed photo is showing. And that's because this tool is uh, going to look at whatever is in the cropped area and it's going to evaluate the scene based on that and make the changes for us inside of Lightroom. Okay, so I'm gonna hit Control N and that's gonna bring up uh, this plugin called Negative Lab. Um, so pretty, pretty simple. I'll just hit convert negative here without changing any settings for now. And it'll go through and evaluate everything and give us a beautiful raw negative conversion. And you can see that, uh, it's done a great job with the colors. The skin tones are great, a little bit peachy, just as you would expect. And we're getting uh, a great tonal balance and color balance, but we could come in here and if we wanted to, we could, uh, we could change the tone profile. Uh, we could do something linear, which is gonna be a little bit softer. Uh, we could do um, all hard, which is uh, hard highlights and hard shadows. There's a lot of different things that we could play around with in here and uh, try to get the tone profile exactly how we want it. Uh, we come in and make manual adjustments to the tones or make adjustments to the color balance and it's really easy. And when we're done, uh, we can just hit apply and there we go. So this is, uh, this is a non-destructive edit, which means that, you know, if I were to look at the before, it would still show the raw file. So all of this is still based on the raw file. It's just changed the profile, the color matrix, 
and then gone in and made very uh, specific, mathematically precise uh, tone curve adjustments. Um, also, if I pull back up Negative Lab, um, it will save all the changes that I've made previously to this photo. So if I were to come in here and say I wanted something that felt kind of bright and airy, I may come in here and push the, the midtones a little bit, maybe uh, push the shadows up just a tiny bit, something a little bit brighter like that and hit apply. Well, if I bring back up Negative Lab, it's remembered those settings um, so I can you know, come back and pick up where I left off at any time instead of any Negative Lab. So I had the same image processed a couple of different ways just so that we can compare and see what we get in terms of tones and colors in the final result. So this is what I got from Color Perfect following all of their steps. And I'll just drag this slider over and you can see what a dramatic difference we're getting in both the tones and the colors using Negative Lab Pro. We go from, we go from this, which feels uh, kind of drab. There's a lot of off colors, uh, both in uh, the darker regions and the lighter regions, we go from that to uh, to this, and it's a really dramatic impact. Okay, so next I actually had this sent out to a professional lab. So this is the result that I got back from them. Uh, it's pretty good. It's it's obviously way better than I got from uh, Color Perfect, but it still feels a little bit flat to me and a little bit drab. There's some off colors in there, maybe a little bit too much green in the shadows. And if we just pull over this slider. Uh, you can see the difference with uh, with Negative Lab Pro. Now, if you like the softness that you're getting uh, with the interpretation from the lab, that's certainly something that you could replicate inside of Negative Lab Pro. I just like things to feel a little bit a little bit more crisp and push the brightness a little bit more. Hey guys, thanks for checking out my video. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. Um, I'll try to, on the website, I'll try to drop in some of those before and after images and a link to some of the tools and uh, pieces of equipment that I've used throughout this. So again, any questions, let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.